Uh, my name is John Fagg. I'm the Head of Postgraduate Studies Research for uh, the School of English Drama and Creative Studies. It's really nice to see lots of you on this call today and to have the opportunity over the next sort of hour or so to talk to you about um, postgraduate study within our school across our various departments. Um, we're going to try to talk a little bit about the different kinds of postgraduate study that are available. Um, so masters, taught masters programmes, masters by research and um, PhD study, which all of, um, which can be done full time or part time um, and distance learning in many instances as well. So we'll try and cover those um, areas. It's going to be a general conversation about sort of the aspects of, of postgraduate work in the school, what we offer. Uh, if you've got general or specific questions, do feel free to um, perhaps write them in the chat in the first instance. And I think as Paul was saying, once we've uh, finished the presentations, we'll we'll stop recording we'll have the opportunity for a kind of question and answer session so if there's things that you'd like to know about hopefully myself paul abigail who is uh, uh head of postgraduate studies for taught programs or ashley who is currently doing a phd with us will be able to to help you out uh, along the way so let's see what we can do in terms of answering questions um to start with a quote from our esteemed head of school tom lockwood uh and it's a good point. This is one of the largest schools in the College of Arts and Law at the University of Birmingham. Variety is our watchword. We offer one of the most extensive ranges of undergraduate and postgraduate study programmes in the country. Our research expertise is equally diverse and we welcome students and researchers from all over the world. Um, Tom's not just boasting here, he's making a good point, which is that this is a, it's a big school of English um, that seeks to cover all of the areas of what we might think of as uh, the study of, of, of English or English studies and probably quite a few things that you wouldn't necessarily immediately or obviously put under that um, that heading as well and one of the things about that is that if you come to study with us here there's that scope for being in a big institution and in a big unit which means that we've got expertise in all kinds of areas um, and there'll be people working on uh, topics both that you you're interested in yourself but also there's that scope to reach out to find postgraduate um, research communities to talk to people um, across a whole range of, of areas and that's one of the things I really like about being in this school that um, you know I've got my interests and my specializations I focus on um, right about early 20th century American literature and visual art and often the relationship between literature and visual art but if I want to talk to someone um, who focuses on or something comes up in my research and I want to talk to someone with a really different set of interests and expertise and knowledge there's someone here that I can find to talk to so that sense of a large school is positive in lots and lots of ways and that's true of Birmingham as a university more broadly as well it's a very large university in terms of both its um, student body the scale of the, 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 the institution and also the range and diversity of, of subjects covered so it, it's a large organization which is um, there's many strengths to working or advantages to working in that way at postgraduate level. I'm going to talk through just a few of the different programmes that we offer. Um, and it's a kind of an indicative selection just to give an idea of the, the breadth of the, the school. So if there's particular things you're interested in that I don't talk about, we can obviously come to those in the questions or in the chat. Um, but just to give an idea, these are these are sort of taught master's programmes. So if you've done an undergraduate degree and you're looking to can continue into postgraduate work, this might be a first point of, um, of departure. So in creative fields, we have a creative writing MA, uh, MAs in film and television and Shakespeare and creativity. And what we think of as literary study, so English literature of various forms, literature and culture MA program that's running the school in the Department of English Literature, then um, talk programs at the Shakespeare Institute, Shakespeare in Education, Shakespeare Studies and Shakespeare in Theatre. And then within English language, so our English language and linguistics department offer programs in applied linguistics, linguistics with TESOL, um, language, culture and communication and TESOL its own, uh, so teaching English as a second language um, there. To go into a bit more detail on just a couple of those examples, so um, one instance of a, of a unique programme that we have that's something that's offered at Birmingham that isn't and can't be really offered any, anywhere else, uh, Shakespeare and Creativity um, programme based at the Shakespeare Institute in Stratford-upon-Avon, but part of the University of Birmingham, part of the School of English, um, a forward-looking programme designed to create uh, conversations about sh what Shakespeare is and what Shakespeare can be in today's world. So using those cultural institutions based in Stratford-upon-Avon, uh, the Royal Shakespeare Company, um, Shakespeare and Society and Shakespeare on, on um, and, and to, to facilitate engaging with Shakespeare as performed, as discussed, as, as encountered and engaged uh, at, at this point in the 21st century. Um, 
so that's an example of one kind of program that we run. To give an idea of how an MA program works, this is to take one of our sort of largest programs, the MA Literature and Culture. Um, an MA year is a tough year. If you're interested in doing a taught MA, it's the year in which you probably write the most amount of words uh, out of any point in your education because you do um, 60 credits of modules per semester plus a, um, a, dis a 60 credit dissertation. Uh, and so uh, over the course, within a single uh, academic year, um, so it's quite intensive, but if that's what you're looking for and you're wanting to take that step on from undergraduate, then it's a really good opportunity to do that. On this programme in the first semester, you'd take one skills for research skills um, course, which everyone that does the MA takes. So that's a kind of plenary session in which everyone learns some, some of those skills as kind of moving from being researchers to being uh, or from being undergraduates to becoming researchers, I guess. Um, and you do that alongside a theme module per semester that are, again, MA focused. Um, and then the yellow bracket, uh, boxes on the screen indicate the two, one option module in the first semester and two in the second. With, um, and, and that's the sort of the three different um, modules that you take per semester. And then you start working right from the outset of the MA and thinking about the dissertation, which you work on across the course of the year, um, and then really focus on um, to write up across the, the, the summer period to hand in in September. Obviously, if you're doing it part time, you stretch that out over two years. And just to give a kind of sense again of that kind of breadth and diversity, on that module, um, this is a selection of the mod of the, the, sorry, on that MA programme, this is a selection of the option modules that we've offered. So where you've got the choice as to what to take, um, these aren't all necessarily run each year, they vary a little bit, but the range of kinds of courses. So um, Peter Mori's Islamophobia in the novel module, a module called Last Year's Novels, which each year reads novels published in the last year. Um, Mapping the Middle Ages, Culture Encounters in Medieval East and West, uh, Remembering World War I, African-American Freedom, 20th Century Literature and um, Culture, uh, The Art of Translation. So that's just a kind of a, a selection of the kinds of modules, the breadth and range that you'd, you'd study um, as, as on, on that programme. To talk about a few other kind of aspects then of our MA um, taught programmes, um, the MA in Applied Linguistics. Um, uh, one of our former students here talking about what it was about that program that they engaged with and um, appreciated, enjoyed, and they really appreciated that the teaching took place in very small groups, which meant I felt relaxed to take part in discussion while my supervisor was patient and provided useful advice on my writing. My course, course combined theory and practice together while giving me lots of opportunities to present my ideas to classmates. And I think that there's lots of things captured in that quote, including the sense of maybe what master's study does a little bit different from what you might have encountered at undergraduate. I think a sense of being um, of a kind of closer collection and relate, oh, connection and relationship to um, staff members. So that sense of becoming involved in your supervisors and um, lecturers research areas and interests a little bit more. And that sense of group participation. Um, you've probably, if you've done an undergraduate degree in a UK university, you've probably been in a seminar where no one talked. I think that when we get to MA level, it's generally the people that were talking and want to be there and want to talk and to, to engage in discussion that are, are turning up. So we, it, I think it moves towards a kind of a more intensive sense of, of peer learning and engagement. And that's something I think that characterizes our small group teaching on MAs at Birmingham. Um, moving on again, just to talk a little bit more about master's study. Obviously, you know, thinking about doing a master's as potentially you know, an opportunity to continue lines of academic and intellectual inquiry that you've developed as an undergraduate, but also thinking about building skills and developing a CV and a set of, um, of things that you can do and demonstrate that you can do. So some of the things that we might think about with master's programs is that sense of time management working independently. You know, if you're thinking about that, the, the amount of material that you have to, to hand in, the sense of having moved again a kind of step further from um, undergraduate in terms of needing to organise your own time to become an independent researcher who develops their own ideas and manages their, their time. That notion of an analytic and critical thinking. Um, one of the things I really found, it was quite a while ago now, I'll admit, but moving from being a, an undergraduate to being an MA student, was a kind of sense that that when I was reading critical material, secondary sources, um, these weren't just sort of things to grab a quote from and bung into an essay, but actually that I was starting to understand that what I was trying to produce in an essay was like the kind of, of, of a similar nature to what I was reading, that I'm trying to produce work that's equivalent to or akin to the kind of secondary 
critical sources I'm using. And I think that that idea of being a, being a critic or becoming a critic is something that lots of our MA programmes foster, working collaboratively with people across different disciplines and cultures, you know, both in terms of there being an international cohort of students coming to Birmingham to work on at postgraduate level. And that idea that I, I started with, that this is a, a large school in which you've got the opportunity to work with people from a diver diverse range of skills, interests, backgrounds, etc. Project management, you might not think of that, but writing a dissertation over the course of a year um, producing a, a project of that kind is, is a task that you're managing, thinking about working with others, using resources, managing your time. And finally, I think communication is really important. Um, that opportunity to gain more experience at giving a presentation or talking and taking part in a discussion, but also, you know, when you're working with a, DMA, a, a dissertation supervisor, managing that relationship, thinking about how to get the most out of a meeting, those kind of things are all areas that the MA works on and improves. Um, and here's one of our students just talking about that a little bit. Um, Nisha signed, uh, took the Masters in Creative Writing um, and had always hoped I'd come out of it a better writer, but I never expected to gain so many skills that would directly benefit my future career in publishing. One of the unique things about Masters in Creative Writing is that it only focuses on making a better writer, but also a better reader something that is integral to an editing career. So thinking about the kinds of skills that you might not anticipate or expect acquiring, um, but the ways in which that can work too. Um, that's a sort of an indication of some of the areas that we're, we're working in at master's taught, um, level. I want to talk just a little bit about postgraduate research degrees. So um, either an MA by research which is an opportunity to do a master's level qualification. So the requirement is that you have a BA or equivalent, um, but that you're rather than taking taught modules, well, that some programs have some elements of that, but rather than taking taught modules, what you're doing is working on a longer dissertation project um, with, a, with a supervisor or, or more than one supervisor over the course of a year, or again, part-time more than one year. Um, and then PhD programs, which obviously um, typically the requirement is to have a master's or in some instances equivalent to that, um, which is a project that can that takes between three and four years or again up to eight years part time um, and works towards an 80,000 word dissertation or equivalent um, and, and means that at the end of it you can say that you're a doctor. Uh, so we've got a range of um, areas where we, we offer a postgraduate um, research degrees so American creative and Canadian studies creative writing drama and theatre studies which includes a practice-based route that we can talk about a little bit more um, English language and linguistics English literature film studies that includes an audio-visual option uh, to make a film or to, for, for filmmaking to be part of your assessed work and then Shakespeare studies um, and as I say they can be offered in a range of different ways so that's the kind of areas in which we offer um, degrees. And just to give a pick up a couple of examples here. So our drama and theater arts, MA by research and PhD program, um, whether practical or theoretical, your research will be supervised by leading experts in your chosen field. Our expertise covers a range of areas from contemporary performance to theater historiography. Our research is conducted using a variety of methodologies, including archival research, performance criticism, and practice as research. So the um, drama and theatre arts as a department offers these um, research programs that, that facilitate a range of ways of engaging with the study um, of drama and, and theatre, whether that's primarily through with what we might think of as critical or historical work, um, or through elements of, of, of performance, working with actors in various ways, working with performance spaces, um, uh, all options available there for research degrees. And one of the things that I've learned in, so I come work in English literature, um, taking on the, uh, the role of kind of an oversight role as head of postgraduate studies and talking to, to, to students working across the school, the range of different ways in which people have, uh, are, are approaching uh, research degrees is really, really striking within the school. Um, another example of that, um, so our film studies PhD program uh, includes the option, although not the requirement, so there's an option to take an audiovisual PhD um, in which you um, produce a dissertation or an equivalent um, piece of writing up to approximately 30,000 words and an hour-long documentary film. We've got um, state-of-the-art state um, recording, editing um, equipment and software and expertise to help you use that. And so you're studying film, but through the process of, of, of making a film as well. That's one of the ways in which you can 
um, study for a, a, a film PhD. There's 80,000 word dissertation is an option, 80,000 word dissertation is an option there too. Um, but we've got students working in the school now who are producing documentary films um, and, and that's, that becomes the assessment for their work. So that's um, just a, a sense of what's happening there. Um, a couple more things just to say about research degrees. Um, if you're interested in pursuing a PhD uh, at Birmingham or other universities, likely the first point of, of, of inquiry really is to find a supervisor um, so or a supervision team. That research degrees are um, centered on working with people with expertise in a particular field. Um, and so one way into looking at what the PhDs that might be available or viable, whether we could support a project that you're interested in doing, would be to look at um, staff profiles, um, easily accessible on the uh, on, online. So you can either search for a particular individual or look at our school's research profiles and find in people within that, which we've all set out our fields of expertise areas where we um, are keen to or able to support PhD um, study. And so looking on those profiles would be a good way to find examples of, of, of how people work and where they work. And so my colleagues, um, Amanda and Saganthi here, that's the kind of the, some of the detail that you get on their um, profile page. And that might be a way into to that kind of inquiry. If you're interested in um, a PhD research, um, you may also be interested in looking into obtaining funding to, to, to study, um, which you should say at the outset is extremely competitive. Um, there's no point in sort of um, making any um, um, inaccurate claims there, that it's a, that, that obtaining um, funding to do a PhD is fantastic if you get it, but it's a really competitive um, application process that really requires a lot of work in, in putting in a, an application and bearing your, bracing yourself for the fact that each year we have funding applications that are really excellent in every every way, but don't get funded. Um, it's a, you know, a really um, sort of challenging application process to go through, which is not to put you off applying, just to make you aware from the outset. So Birmingham is part of, uh, University of Birmingham is part of the um, Midlands Four Cities Doctoral Training Partnership, which is so funding through the AHRC, um, but we're in a consortium with other Midlands universities um, you've got the option to do a PhD where you're supervised by um, colleagues from more than one of these universities. So cross-site supervision is an option. Um, you apply to the university that you want to be your home university, and there's an opportunity each year to apply for funding. I'd strongly advise that if you're considering doing that, you get in touch with prospective supervisors and other members of, of our school to get some advice on how to do that funding application. It's, it's something that you need support and you need to work with supervisors on. Again, I can answer any questions people have about PhD funding um, when we get to the question and answer session. A um, couple more things. So within the school, um, obviously, whether you're doing a research degree or you're doing a master's and you're maybe thinking about moving into areas of research, um, one of the ways that you might want to engage is through our research um, centres that are kind of an indication of the research culture within the school. So we have a number of centres and networks um, that bring together researchers and postgraduate students in particular areas. So the Centre for the Study of North America, um, Birmingham Centre for Film Studies, Centre for Contemporary Literature and Culture, Centre for Corpus Research, CLEMT, which stands for um, Centre for Literary Editing and the Material Text, uh, Digital Cultures, Modernist Cultures and 19th Century Centres. So they're kind of clusters of areas of interest, um, which typically run uh, reading groups, research seminars, symposiums, um, host visiting speakers, sometimes organised training events as well. And it may be that your research fits to or relates to one of these areas and you want to become part of that centre, or it might be that you just want to drop in on a session that they run. And that gives an idea of kind of how research culture between, you know, postgraduate and staff level works within the school. Um, so that's an example. Um, some of the kind of sessions that we've run going a little way back to, to last semester, but um, you know, screenings, discussions of a particular text, um, events that explore a, a particular research area. Okay, so I'm gonna stop talking at this point. I think we are gonna have another short talk from um, Ashley, and then we'll have the opportunity to ask an aunt and hopefully answer questions. I see that there's a few come through in the chat, but we'll go, for, we'll go from there. Okay.
sorry, I was on mute. Hello, everybody. Thank you very, very much for, um, for coming today. I am a PhD student in the Department of English Language and Applied Linguistics. And I'm just going to give you a very, very short talk about what it's like to be a student at the university and really why, why you should choose the University of Birmingham. We're, we're obviously not on the campus today, but it's a, it's a very beautiful campus and it's ranked in the top 70 in the world for arts and humanities. So um, very, very popular. We've got over 1,500 postgraduate research students in the College of Arts and Law. So it's, it's very, very popular. Like I said, it's a really beautiful campus and there's excellent support for um, postgraduate studies at the university. There's also a lot of extracurricular activities that you can get involved in. I'm in my third year of my PhD and I really have found that there's just so many things to get involved in, um, to, in all sorts of different areas. And I think John touched on this. There's, there's so many different skills that you actually gain on the journey. I have gained skills that I didn't actually expect to gain um, at the onset. So, so it's, it's fantastic. Um, there's a fantastic research skills team at the library, um, which is really helpful when you're, when you're doing postgraduate studies. A lot of support for research skills. So whether you're using statistics um, or other methods within your research, and there's a lot of support to help you in that journey. In our department, we have a, an in-house group, which we fondly call PG Tips, kind of named after the T, but we meet once a week, either in, on the campus or on Zoom. And we, we have a series of talks. Sometimes we do more practical things um, where we have somebody teach us how to you know, gain a new skill, um, or we listen to each other's presentations and we gain experience, um, which is really valuable when you're presenting at conferences or disseminating your research in, in other avenues. Um, we also have an informal mentoring st scheme amongst us, our students, so postgraduate students will mentor each other, um, but there's also formal um, tutors who support us in the department as well. I'm very fortunate I have weekly supervision meetings with my supervisor. I think the stand is, is about once a month, um, but I have a meeting every week sort of to keep abreast of my research and, and give me guidance, which has been fantastic. And you also have the opportunity to teach if you wish during your journey. I'm currently teaching seminars at the university and I've just finished a, um, I've just finished training to support that role. So I've done, um, it's called Introduction to Academic Practice for Doctoral Students. And that gives you the opportunity to become an Associate Fellow of the Higher Education Academy. So um, there's lots of opportunities to, to gain skills in other areas, as I mentioned. Um, there is also a university graduate school that organizes a number of different sessions, like we call it Shut Up and Work, that's the acronym, where we meet online and you set yourself a target and other people set targets and you work for, say, for example, a solid hour, and then you, you chat again about whether you've managed to ask, to complete your targets. And a lot of different things, research poster con conferences, three-minute thesis. I won't just read them off the screen, but there's, there's a lot to be involved in. There are workshops as you near the end of your studies to help you gain the correct skills, careers guidance, um, support as a student um, through the Guild of Students. Um, support for your writing um, from the Academic Writing Advisory Service, which is very useful as well. And you can book a one-to-one -one appointment if you wish. There's other opportunities as a postgraduate student. Again, in terms of writing support, there are conferences. So the department I'm involved in has a UK Cognitive Linguistics Conference. We have a Corpus Linguistics Summer School, which will be in, I think it's in July this year. And in our department, we have a um, postgraduate conference, which we organize as students for students. Um, so that's coming up at the end of this month. And I'm on the committee that helps organize that. And another thing that I'm doing this year is we have a statistics for linguistics summer school, um, which is run by Bodo Winter and a number of other academics. Um, so Bodo is very well known as being a statistics guru, should I say. So it's a very exciting opportunity for us all to be taught by him. And there's lots of links with other departments um, in the university. So links with psychology, um, oh, I, I won't list them, but it, it's 
very, very supportive. The campus, like I said, is very beautiful and there's a number of cultural things that you can be involved in. Um, as students, we sometimes meet at Winterbourne House and Gardens, but there's the Bramall Music Building where there's concerts on offer, there's the Cadbury Research Library, um, Geology, um, there's a fantastic sports and fitness club. And of course there's Old Joe, which we're all very fond of at the university. So the, the clock tower, which is a, a really central part of the campus. And just before I end, there's, there's a lot to do. The um, Guild of Students has over 500 student groups that you can be involved in. And I just wanted to show you a picture of the swimming pool at um, the Sport and Fitness Centre. And of course, we're having the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham this year. So that's very exciting. And there's the city as well. So um, it's not very far at all from the university if you, if you want to do things outside of the university as well. Um, so come and join us and I'm very happy to answer any specific queries you might have as to what it's like to be a student. But thank you very much for listening.